Do you understand why the Palestinians don't trust you? Um, uh, look, I'm not here to be trusted. I'm here to... Well, you are, frankly. So there's a difference between the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian people, okay? And you I... think the Palestinian people would be okay with all of those things that you guys have done? The actions we've taken were because America's aid is not an entitlement, right? If we make certain decisions which we're allowed to as a sovereign nation to respect the rights of another sovereign nation, and we get criticized by that government, the response of this president is not to say, oh, let me give you more aid. Shai, I mean... Look, the Palestinian people and the Palestinian leadership ostensibly are not on the same page here, according to Jared Kushner. And he's saying that ultimately he's trying to do something that is going to be for the betterment of the Palestinian people. What are your thoughts? My, look, the fact is that the majority of Palestinian people, they look to their leadership and not just in terms of some kind of government that is popularly elected, which it's not technically right now, but as a symbol of, of their pride, of their national pride. Uh, he wouldn't commit in this latest interview to whether or not the two-state solution was going to be involved. But earlier, when he did the Washington Institute talk with Rob Satloff, he made it pretty clear that statehood was not on the table. Uh, Palestinians... Th this idea well, that we, don't know, we don't know that he made it clear that it wasn't on the table. He made it clear that the first step to this would be an economic plan that would be for the betterment of the Palestinian people. It didn't really definitively rule out uh, that the political uh, solution or proposal would come at the same time. But Thane, uh, Kushner says that the Palestinians don't need to trust him, but they need to understand that he's trying to, make a, to, to put forward something that's going to help them have better lives. Does it matter when they rejected it, sight unseen anyway? Michelle, you know, he sounds like a landlord, you know, and that's a position he's been in before. He's saying, look, you don't have to trust me. I'm offering you a, a plan that will lead to your prosperity. You will be the most prosperous Arabs other than uh, oil-producing countries. Uh, you've already rejected uh, and been obstinate when statehood was offered to you. Now we're going to offer you something else. Uh, and I think this is one of the reasons why the administration has, has ignored the Palestinian leadership and gone to Persians, to Gulf states, to say, look, we're coming up with a very different plan. It's a plan of economic opportunity. And let's see if the Palestinians will be tempted by this. And if not, they may throw up well, their hands and say, look, the Palestinians simply continue to be rejectionists no matter what you offer them. If you offer them land in exchange for peace, they reject it unless they get 100 percent of what they want. When you offer them economic prosperity, they reject it because now it doesn't provide for statehood. And I think that what I think the Trump administration is counting on is that people are tiring of the Palestinians. Well, we don't hear too much optimism uh, from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, uh, at least uh, according to leaks that we've heard. He's facing some controversy for expressing skepticism about the peace plan during a recent closed-door meeting with Jewish leaders. Now, according to the Washington Post, Pompeo told the gathering that he understands why people think that this is going to be a deal that only the Israelis could love. But he said that he hopes everyone We'll just give it the space to listen and let it settle a little bit and then see if we, quote, have struck the right place. Pompeo also reportedly saying that the plan is unexecutable and that it may be rejected. Well, we're also hearing from Democratic president candidate Tulsi Gabbard, Gabbard rather. She says that the problems between Israel and the Palestinians have been made worse by President Trump and Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Here's what she told our news partners at Cheddar. Israel is a key alliance in the Middle East, as they have been for a long time. Uh, the decisions that have been made by Bibi Netanyahu and even Donald Trump and his administration, I think, have had a counterproductive impact on the path towards peace between the Israeli and Palestinian people, which is causing a lot of problems that we're seeing. I think we need to, across the Middle East and in different parts of the world, seek to build more partnerships. Can we blame... President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu for the strife between Israelis and Palestinians and for that matter, the strife and conflict throughout the region, which has nothing to do with Israel and the Palestinians. Michelle, how close did they get before in eight years of the Obama administration? Palestinians wouldn't even meet with the Israelis at that point. So in what in what way was it worse off to be here during the Trump administration? 
Uh, I think we have also an extraordinary, uh, unusual situation where the, remember, the Secretary of State has not been involved in these negotiations at all. Imagine if Richard Nixon had said to Henry Kissinger, we're going to have a, a Middle East peace plan, but you're not going to be involved in those discussions. We're going to have some real estate guys involved instead. And I think that what you were hearing in this sort of private conversation, I think, was some frustration unleashed by the Secretary of State that even he doesn't exactly know what's going and happening. And I think he's also preparing everyone to say what we're calling the deal of the century may be a non-deal because the Palestinians simply will not participate. Shai, you can't really uh, very quickly in the 20 seconds that we have left blame Secretary Pompeo for being skeptical that this is going to work out, can you? Look, he, he's skeptical. I think President Trump wants to hedge his bets a little bit also. And also, look, Pompeo, he's been left out of the loop. He should take advantage of that politically. So if it doesn't work and if it fails, although it has to be presented first before it can fail. And economically, he says the Palestinians aren't even ready for investment. So in, right. which, in which case, what, what's the point of doing the economics first? All right. But we have Democrats blaming Netanyahu and Trump nonetheless. All right. Thank you so much, Shai Franklin. Thank you, Netanyahu. Appreciate look, it.